Job 14 and verse 10, But man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Dear friends, God's word tells us about the eternal realities and destinies of souls, either in heaven with Christ or hell without him. And as you listen to me right now, you're travelling to either heaven or hell. I've already spoken in recent days about the glories of heaven, the place that Christ has prepared for me. But dear friends, I've got to warn you about the reality of hell. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 7, O son of man, I have set thee for a watchman. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. And if you fail to warn them, God says, verse 8, his blood will I require at thy hand. Why is it that preachers seem to forget about hell today? They never mention it to their congregations and let them go out into a lost eternity without ever knowing about its reality. But the Lord Jesus was the one that not only spoke about heaven, he also warned about hell. All oh, the liberals and modernists tell us, but we've moved on from there. People don't want to hear that anymore. But my friend, I'd rather be faithful to my Savior than to have the plaudits of man. And when I read what Jesus says about hell, then I must tell you. In Luke chapter 16, the Bible says there was a certain rich man and then there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. The Bible says that Lazarus died. And then it says the rich man also died and was buried. Yes, his money couldn't buy off death. But then Jesus says this, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. You see, hell is a place of terrifying reality. This man knew the gospel. It wasn't something that he had never heard. You see, how do I know? Well, when I read this story from the lips of the Lord Jesus, the man speaks about, have mercy on me. He knew about the message of mercy. And then he said, also in verse number 28, that he may testify unto them. He knew about testimonies. And then in verse number 30, he says, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He knew about the necessity of repentance. So he had gospel knowledge. And yet with all of this gospel knowledge, friend, it wasn't until that he went to a lost sinner's hell that he realized has lost his state before God and his sinfulness. He started to pray. He prayed for relief. Notice he did not pray to escape because there was none. But he said, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And then he prayed for his relatives. For my friend, he begged all oh, that his relatives would not come to this place. Of torments. What a terrifying reality. But it is also a place of tormenting memory. It says in verse number 25, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime. His lifetime was recalled and so in yours. Oh, dear friend, all that he loved in this world has passed away. And now it says, the eternal now, now thou art tormented. What an eternity of regret for a lost soul. Think of all the opportunities that God has given you. Think, my friend, the prayers of a godly father or mother. Think indeed of the Bible verses you were taught in Sunday school or the gospel hymns you used to sing. Think of the gospel tract that was handed to you by some loved one or friend. Think of the tears of a faithful gospel preacher. And yet with it all, you've gone to hell. Listen, you do not take your money, you do not take your possessions to hell, but you do take your tormenting memory. Then thirdly, it's a place of unsatisfied desires. Never in his lifetime does it mention he prayed, but he prays three times. But notice in all the prayers that he made, earnest though they were, the answer was, nay, no. You see, his prayers were too late. I remember a wee man in hospital 
I stood beside him in intensive care. He begged for a glass of water. The nurse came and I asked her to give it to him, but she said, I cannot, he's not allowed fluids. And then she took a spoon and dipped it in water and she rubbed it across his lips. And he said, I'd gladly give my wee farm for a glass of cold water, but he couldn't get one. It's a place of hopelessness. If you're sick, you hope to get better. If your business fails, you hope that it, it will recover. But friend in hell, there is no hope. Ye who enter here, leave all hope behind. Out into the darkness, a place of vile companionships. And yet in the darkness, all alone, I beg you, choose heaven. Come to Christ. Heavenly Father, bless your word to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. From my heart to yours, home to yours. God bless you.